It is Tuesday, September 6, 2022, and welcome to the interim board meeting in the School District of Springfield Township. On a personal note, my best friend had a baby today, so September 6 is a special day. It's also my other best friend's birthday, so just a fun fact. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and go right to the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The mission of the school district of Springfield Township is to educate and develop all students as learners and citizens who are high achieving, resilient and responsible in a changing global community. Let's go to roll call. Ms. Green. Mr. Needleman. Here. Mr. DeFranco. Here. Dr. Atlin. Here. Mrs. Green. Here. Mrs. Hubley. Here. Mrs. Hughes. Here. Mrs. Slipinski. Here. Dr. Taratuski. Here. Mr. Bernard. Here. Just one quick announcement. The board at its discretion may videotape all or any portion of public board meeting subject to the limitations set forth in policy 006 meetings. Board meetings will be broadcast on Friday afternoon following each board meeting. And we'll jump right into the main events. We have reports and information. Uh, first from policy committee, Ms. Carla Green. All right, well, good evening. Good evening. Um, we had a policy meeting on 829 in attendance was uh, Mary, Dr. Mary Yannicone, Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Michelle Lutz, Director of Support Services, um, Michael Niederman, Vice President of the School Board. Uh, this is Kara Green, Business Administrator, Carla Green, Board Member, and Zara Hughes, Board Member. Um, there were a few leftover policies that were reviewed. Um, Dr. Lutz reviewed them with the team, but I'm only going to mention a couple. Um, policy 146, um, which is new from PDE on trauma-informed practice. I thought that was really actually interesting, providing training under trauma-informed lens. Um, and the policy practices um, fits in with our education and staff wellness program as part of the K-2 student services plan. And we're giving strategies to make the classroom more trauma-informed and then also using universal design. I'm also going to mention one another policy, our uh, policy 217, which is graduation policy, something I think is really interesting. The veterans that have left high school prior to obtaining, obtaining their diploma can now receive their high school diploma, and that's a wonderful tribute to um, our veterans. Um, also, parents policy 224, just want to let you know um, that that mentions the care of school property and that both the students and parents are responsible for those Chromebooks, so uh, we want to make sure that we're taking good care, care of them. Um, there's a policy 236.1 threat assessment, which was required under Act 55 with the goal of supporting the students so they don't carry out threats. And so we're offering support, but students still can be referred um, for discipline. A threat assessment team will be trained at each of our schools. Um, we're moving all of those forward for a first reading. Uh, and then over the summer, um, the work that the superintendent has done with her team, um, all of the, our administrative regulations now come in compliance with the policies. And that work was done over the summer, so we thank you for that. Um, all of our student-focused policies are now completed. And Ms. Cara Green then spoke to us in regards to some policies in the 600s. Um, some were accepted with no changes in their policy 601. Some went almost through 624. Um, there were some minor changes required by PSSA, PSBA, in regards to budget preparation, budget adoption, payroll authorization, and proc procurement. Um, there were sub substantive changes um, in regards to policy 610, 611. We also reviewed 616 and 620. Um, we are holding for a future meeting at this PSS, PSBA, waiting for the recommendation, and also being reviewed by our financial advisor and our solicitor, um, some policies that are 609, 618. Um, we're going to review that later. And then 216.1, 
PSBA recommended that deletion because it is no longer, it is redundant. So um, that policy will be deleted. You'll see that further as we move forward in our meeting. And that's my report. Thank you, Ms. Green. Any comments or questions? All right, very good. Um, we now have the administrator. much and happy new year everyone uh, <laughs> it's new year for us mm -hmm. of course today was the first day of school um, it was a rainy start we want to thank all of our families and staff who work together Uh, enrollment in Springfield schools is actually on the rise this year. We've had 85 new registrations this summer in grades 1 through 12, and we have 189 students in the kindergarten as of today. Um, withdrawals this summer are actually down about 15% as well. Uh, so, that's all, so our net is up. Um, our total enrollment is 2,560 as of today. And we have a few more student registrations in process that we're expecting to get some students on board uh, by the end of the week. Um, Enfield this morning welcomed 566. Erdenheim, 599. Uh, the middle school wins at 620 um, for those three grade level schools. And uh, they have that highest per grade average in over 200 for each of those three grades. And then the high school is at 775, also a large number for them. Um, so we had a great first day, and we're thrilled to have our students back. I also wanted to mention, I know that there's been a lot in the press, nationally and regionally, about staffing shortages. I want to let you know that here in Springfield, um, we are thriving. We had a really busy summer. We hired 24 professional staff, 13 support staff, and seven temporary staff uh, over the summer months. And then we had um, additional positions in instructional support, support services, and in the classroom. And that doesn't include an additional 300 plus positions that um, Ms. Kerr and her team processed through Human Resources for extra pay positions, Spartan Academies, ESY, summer technology, maintenance, and curriculum writing. So our new staff uh, joined the returning 429 team members who are working across the district. Um, and we're really happy to have that team with us. The other day, um, we celebrated the start of the new year on Thursday with convocation with the entire district staff. Um, you have a little uh, gift at the table here for each of you as a thank you to you. I did thank all of you publicly at the board meeting for the ongoing support and volunteerism of the board um, and our solicitor to be able to work with us and do a great job to make sure that we're doing a good job for our community. Um, I want to thank everybody in the community for contributing uh, to a terrific summer. And um, I do want to let you know we are finalizing a few of our open positions. And we'll be waiting for a few of our staff members to join us after the 60-day holds in their home districts. Um, but we have hired substitute teachers and we have our contracted services to fill in so that every classroom has a teacher right now. Um, and um, we're very excited that we're in the process of hiring some additional instructional aides. And um, we are able to today manage all of our bus runs through the transportation office. So while we could always use a few more bus drivers, we're in very good shape overall. Um, also want to mention, to the, for the community's sake um, and for all of our board members, we have four upcoming back to school nights on the four successive Thursdays starting this Thursday. So we start with Erdenheim on Thursday evening at 6 o'clock. Next week, we have the high school on Thursday at 6.30. The following week, Enfield at 6 o'clock. And the, and the last one of the month is our middle school at 6 o'clock. So our secondary uh, back to school nights start at 6.30. And our primary uh, back to school nights start at 6 o'clock. Um, we're excited to welcome families back into the building. And um, finally, just want to share our district themes for the year with the community. Uh, our administrative team worked with the Board of School Directors, as well as um, our full staff in thinking about what's next for Springfield Township. And we identified um, three themes. So I just want to read this. 
Um, we aspire to be a community of growth and caring rooted in equitable practices in order to create an environment where everyone is valued, respected, and belongs. We will instill, inspire, and celebrate pride in our school district. We'll create and support authentic learning opportunities for students and staff. And we will encourage and nurture innovation in our systems and programs. We're really excited about these three themes. We feel they encapsulate forward thinking um, in our district and are really going to be exciting to see develop as we move forward. Um, later this week, I'm going to be releasing uh, my fall newsletter. And in it, I'll include these themes, but also detailed um, descriptions of each of our five district goals for this year. In June, I had provided a report to the community on our district goals and the extent to which we accomplished each of them. So I want to let the community know what our new five goals are and what we'll be working on this year. And with that, I'll conclude my report for tonight. Thank you. Excellent update on the first day. Um, any comments or questions for Dr. Yannicka? Uh, sound very exciting. I expect all the board members to attend each. So let's go through now and commit <laughs> to each. Just kidding. Um, but it is, uh, it is exciting to get families back in the school for sure. Great. All right, we're going to move on to uh, public comment. And it does not appear that we have any public comment signups in the room. No, it does not. Uh, if there's anyone on who's joining us online who wants to speak on an agenda item, please raise your hand. Okay, seeing no hands, uh, we will come back for public comment at the end of the meeting as well. So moving into the business of our meeting today, under human resources, personnel, and HR contracts, we have our first subject, personnel human resources, personnel, and HR contracts. Recommended action, the Board of School Directors approves the following personnel as presented in the attachment. Confidential personnel, certified personnel, support personnel, mentor training and support, extended school year ESY program personnel, extra pay for extra responsibilities 2022-2023, and conference workshop attendance. Is there a motion? And a second. second. Any comments or questions on the personnel file? All right. um, oh gosh, <laughs> remind me of the language again to do. <laughs> Is it just all in favor? Yes. Okay. Uh, so on the, on the recommended action, I don't know why this is so hard for me. Is that regression over the summer that needs to be addressed uh, for the IEP process? I just okay. rolled in from vacation and it is very rusty. So on the recommended action for a personnel file, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion will pass. Item number two, performance incentive payment. Recommended action, the Board of School Directors approves a performance incentive payment to Dr. Mary Jo Yannicone in the amount of $4,000, less all legally required withholdings, to be paid in one lump sum and not to be included in her salary for the successful accomplishment of her established objective performance standards for the 2021 and 2022 school year. Is there a motion? And a second. Any comments or questions uh, related to the bonus compensation for Dr. Yannicko? Congratulations. Well earned, well deserved. All those in favor of the recommended action say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Move to academic affairs. Our first subject, New Hope Academy tuition re agreements. Recommended action. The Board of School Directors approves the tuition contracts between Springfield Township School District and New Hope Academy for students 2022-0906-01 and 2022-0906-02 in the amount of $40,900 each 
for the 2022-2023 school year. Is there a motion? And a second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor of the recommended action say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Our next subject two, Cristaldo Associates Inc. The Board of School Directors approves an agreement between Cristaldo Associates Inc. and the Springfield Township School District to provide translation services. Is there a motion? And a second. All those in favor of the Cristaldo Associates contract say aye. 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 And opposed? Motion will pass. Subject number three under academic affairs, Nusella. Recommended action. The Board of School Directors approves the renewal subscription with Nusella. Digital resources for ELA, social studies, and social emotional learning for use in grades three through 12 for the 2022-2023 school year for a total purchase of $26,500. Is there a motion? And a second. second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor of the renewal of the new Stella contract say aye. 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 And any opposed? That motion will pass. No agenda items on finance today. We'll move into our policy section. First subject is 100 and 200 level policies and a first reading. Recommended action. The Board of School Directors approves the first reading of the following 100 and 200 level policies. 146.1, trauma-informed approach. 214, class rank. 217, graduation. 224, care of school property. 236.1, threat assessment. Is there a motion? And a second. second. Any comments or questions? Very good. All those in favor of the first reading approval say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion will pass. Subject number two under policy. Policy 216.1, supplemental discipline records repeal. Recommended action, the Board of School Directors approves the repeal of policy 216.1, supplemental discipline records. Is there a motion? Motion. And a second. Any comments or questions on this repeal? Okay. All those in favor of uh, the motion, policy 216.1, say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> that will pass. Subject number three are 600 level policies with no updates. And this is a first reading. As there are no updates and a lengthy list, I will only describe the range here, the recommended action. The Board of School Directors approves the first reading of the following 600 level policies with no updates, ranging from 601 fiscal objectives through 624 taxable fringe benefits, all included as attachments. Is there a motion? And a second. Second. Any comments or questions? I just do have one question. Even though there are no changes, these were all reviewed in the standard policy review process? Yes. <clears throat> yes, that's actually why we wanted to include them in this process. Great. So that will be clear that they were reviewed in 2022. Makes sense. Thank you. All those in favor of the first reading of the 600 policies say aye. 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 And any opposed? Motion will pass. Subject number four, we have some 600 level policies with minor language changes and a first reading. Recommended action. The Board of School Directors approves the first reading of the following 600 level policies with minor language changes. Policy 603, budget presentation. Policy 604, budget adoption. Policy 614, payroll. And policy 625, procurement cards. Is there a motion? 
and a second. Any comments or questions on 600s with minor changes? All those in favor of the motion on 600 minor changes, say aye. 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 And opposed? That will pass. And final under policy is number five, 600 level policies with substantive language changes. And this is a first reading. Recommended action, the Board of School Directors approves the first reading of the following 600 level policies with substantive language changes. 610, purchase subject to bid quotation. 611, purchases budgeted. 616, payment of bills. 620, fund balance. Is there a motion? Motion. And a second. Any comments or questions on this first reading? Can I make it? Oh. Yeah, I just have a question on the um, fund balance um, policy. And I'm just curious about what prompted the increase to from 2% to 4%, the threshold. Was that a um, that like state legal requirement or was that a district? No, reference? so um, the part that's a um, legal requirement is you can't cap more than 8% based upon our budgeted expenditures for state purposes. Mm -hmm. So that number stayed the same. Um, in our finance uh, committee meetings, if you recall, during budget time, we have um, a lot of discussion about fund balance um, and ensuring that uh, we maintain our fund balance. Mm -hmm. um, so looking at that 2%, that's the part that triggers in the unassigned piece that the number is there for unassigned that the board would take action mm -hmm. um, to do something with expenditures to make sure that we maintain that 2%. I thought that number was low based upon um, how we had discussions in the past about the health of our fund balance. So it's just upping that unassigned number where the board would trigger to take action if it fell below the 4%. So if you're looking at total expenditures of about 63 million, which is where we are, the 2% is at 1.2 million. It raises it to about 2.5. Okay. Um, and then the 8% is about at 5 million of where we can have unassigned. That's not our total fund balance, but mm -hmm. just that unassigned portion. So we're strengthening this a little bit so that it triggers the board if we fell below that, um, that there would be a larger discussion and board action on that. Okay, thank you, appreciate that. Yeah, great question. Mr. Needham. No, I, I, everything's been covered. I was just going to say, uh, pursuant to what Ms. Green said in the committee meeting, all, all of this is designed to strengthen uh, the district's financial position. And, and even, I should have said something before, even going back to policy 603, 604, 614, and 625, these are all, I think it's fair to say, correct me if I'm wrong, Ms. Green, but they're, they're security measures, basically, right? That they strengthen the district's not just financial condition, but also ability to, to police that condition, for lack of a better term. That's all. Thank you. Excellent. Any other comments or questions? All right. All those in favor of the 600 policies with substantive language changes first reading say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion will pass. We have no items from property uh, on this agenda, which leads us directly into public comments on non-agenda items. Again, reviewing the room, I do not believe we have anyone signed up in the room. We do not. Uh, and if, again, if there's anyone online, it looks like someone has just joined us. If uh, you want to speak on <laughs> a non-agenda item, please uh, come forward. Oh, I did a big time. All right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Angela Veal Toffee, uh, apparently liaison for the Multicultural Parent Association. I would like to say welcome back to a wonderful new school year and thank you for all that you do and are about to do and wiping tears and everything else. And so the Multicultural Parent Association would love to invite you to our first field trip of the year where we will be attending and following up on our water safety and, and just change as a public neglect, a public health threat. We'll be taking a field trip on September 17th to the pool exhibition uh, entitled Pool, a social history uh, of pools in, in our country. And we, it will be, we'll be meeting at 11 o'clock. It also will be in conjunction 
with the celebration of Jim Ellis and the PDR swimming team, which is a local historical um, perspective in the world of Olympic swimming in our country. So we'd like to invite you there. And then, of course, to our MPA parent, uh, our picnic on the 18th that next day. So we're a whirlwind <laughs> and in our book club. And so we just thank you in advance. Like we say, we don't always want to come when things are bad. But we want to celebrate you and thank you for what you do when things are good. So thank you. I came late just for that. <laughs> <laughs> Your timing was perfect. Thank you thank for the you. comments. <laughs> All right. Uh, seeing no one else uh, present in the room, if anyone who's joining us online has something to comment on, a non-agenda item, please let us know. Just as a reminder, while folks are maybe trying to get online. Uh, if, if there's a three minute allotment, if you could please just let us know your name and where you live in the township, in the, in the township that would be great. Uh, I, either I've babbled too, <laughs> not quickly, and I mean not long enough or too quickly, or uh, there's no one who wants to make any comment because I don't see any hands. Very good. I think uh, it's the first, you know, first day back to school, and uh, I think parents are hearing the great stories from all their kids about the excitement of the of the day, as I did when I got home earlier. Um, very good. We'll go into uh, just a few announcements to close the meeting. Future meeting dates. We have a regular board meeting on Tuesday, September twentieth, twenty twenty two. This will be a hybrid meeting. Um, with uh, attendance uh, encouraged here at the Freeze Memorial Lobby. We have a property committee meeting on Wednesday, September 28th at 8 a.m. That will be a virtual meeting. And we have an interim board meeting on Monday, October 3rd, 2022, also hybrid. Um, details for these meetings will be found on the district website. And with that, I'm gonna keep this meeting short and sweet and congratulate all of our administrative uh, staff uh, administrators and teachers for a great first day uh, and a very productive summer. Welcome back to school, everyone, and we'll adjourn for the evening. Thank you. Thank you.